This is the Nano HD0. It's essentially the Micro HD0, but in a nano sized body and with an M8 lens instead of an M12 lens. It has the same sensor as the Micro, but again, put into that smaller body. So the body size is uh, 14 millimeter by 16 millimeter rather than uh, micro size, which is going to be uh, 19 millimeter by 19 millimeter. All of this flight footage is taken on my tiny trainer, my new favorite drone, uh, especially that the weather is starting to get colder and I can rep this thing around in small parks and around my house. Um, and the nano size is a, is a perfect fit for this type of small three inch drone. What you're seeing here in this DVR clip is um, enhanced sharpening and the high saturation setting. Later on, I'll, I'll be showing what the stock uh, camera settings look like. I thought this looked the best uh, with this particular lens. So overall, I'd say it looks very good. The image is very detailed and it can be extremely colorful and give you a lot of information while you're flying. That said, I still would prefer to fly the bigger M12 glass lens. This is also a glass lens. But you know, as, as you go to a smaller lens, um, it's trickier to get the optics as good as the big M12 lens. But still, this is, this is great. If, if uh, Nano is what you can only fit into your frame, then this is an awesome camera to put in it. We've really come a very long way from the original Runcam HD for nano cameras for the HD Zero system. This is definitely going to change the game, especially for lightweight builds and things like whoops in the future. Here I am changing the camera settings like I was describing earlier. So we're going to the high saturation and the enhanced sharpness setting. And that's the difference that it makes in the picture. And now here's a clip of what the stock camera settings look like. Obviously not as colorful, but a bit more true to life. This lens on the camera is a little bit more muted than the uh, micro camera lenses. So here's what flying at night looks like with this lens. Just so you know, it is pitch black out at this time of night, and those are some really bright 1500 lumen floodlights uh, lighting up my backyard here. I'd say it's doing pretty well. It's got a fair amount of lens flare. Um, I, I haven't flown a lot in the backyard with these floodlights on, so I, I don't know how that compares to my other cameras and lenses but I'd say it's doing a very good job. There's a lot of color uh, gain noise that you can see in the dark. Uh, and this is the same effect that you had with the micro camera. I mean, these are the same camera sensors essentially. So uh, all, all of this looks, uh, looks pretty good. We'll have to wait for some bigger sensor cameras in the future, wink, wink, for better low light performance than this. The field of view on this lens is 69 degrees. Uh, that compares pretty closely to the field of view on the Digisite V2, which I think is 70 degrees. And if you want to compare it to the Runcam HD, that one was around, I think, 65 degrees. If you compare it to its big brother, the Micro HD Zero camera, that one had a nice 75 degree field of view. And we could open that up even bigger uh, to maybe around 82, 83 degrees with the RC18G lens, which is still my current favorite for getting maximum vertical field of view. Speaking of maximum field of view, I couldn't help myself. So I threw the HD0 M8 upgrade lens onto this camera, and oh boy, that really changes things up a bit. That's because the image circle on the back of this lens is not big enough for this whole sensor. But what it also means is that we're using the Mac, a pretty, pretty big chunk of the maximum vertical field of view of this lens. 
So, I actually don't mind the vignetting in the corners. Um, I go back and forth between flying this in 4x3 cut mode and uh, flying it in 16x9 mode. In 16x9 mode, there's kind of like this scuba mask effect, and it uh, does a pretty good job of hiding the distortion. In 4x3 mode, I feel like I'm flying a 4x3 native camera. So, best of both worlds, I suppose. So I guess let's wrap this up. A uh, few things I haven't covered yet are the weight. It's 4.3 grams, which is super light. That's the lightest uh, HD Zero camera I think that's come out yet. There's a back cover plate to help secure the MIPI and protect the back of the camera, which is also great. And perhaps one of the biggest things, you're gonna actually be able to buy one from a normal reseller. I've been talking with Carl and he, he's not happy with how things have gone with shipping uh, for the micro camera. So check this list out. Next FPV, RC Hangar 15, Drone Shop, Fly Smart, Quad Junkie, Newbie Drone, Defiance RC, Pyro Drone, Hobby RC, Drone It, Buzz FPV, Phaser FPV, Drone FPV Racer, Drone for Speed, 533, Get FPV, and RDQ. And can I just say, I love this system. I love the tiny trainer. I can do things like this, rip around the neighborhood that I'm in, not bother anybody, this thing's tiny. I've got decent range with this 200 milliwatt Boot VTX. Uh, here I'm gonna go push the limit uh, just to see how far I can go. It does pretty good. I mean, I'm happy with it. Thanks for watching. There's more to come. Everyone uh, go have fun and go fly and take care of each other.